Today, I'm going to talk about how to enjoy the same old things. Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. This video is in response to a question I got from a, a commenter. Uh, I had mentioned in my video on psychedelics um, the, the, uh, the problem of being bored by things that we already know. And so uh, he asked, you know, naturally enough, like, so how do you go about not being bored by the same thing, you know, by the things that you already know? So uh, the, the context um, in psychedelics was about how uh, we have theories of the world and interact primarily with our theories, not with the world. And therefore we get bored by them because we already know our own theories, what with them being our own theories. I, and I don't mean theory in an extremely abstract sense, only in a somewhat abstract sense. Now, um, the, the thing I'm going to talk, I, I think it's a little bit easier to get at this subject. If we look at how to enjoy a movie multiple times, how to enjoy a book multiple times. And one of the easy ways to figure this out is to look at how we go wrong and therefore how to not do that thing. So if you try watching the same movie several times, and it will vary with the individual in the movie, but, um, and this is a movie that you like, uh, obviously, um, what you'll find is what you end up doing is anticipating the movie or anticipating the book. A moment before the character says his line, you're saying that line in your head. And there are several things about this, but one of them is that you, generally speaking, don't say the line in your head as well as the actor on screen says the line. Um, and yet you're substituting your saying of the line for the actor on screen. So you are depriving yourself of the good that is there uh, in the, say, the watching of the movie with a lesser good that's in your own head. And it's even worse because it's your anticipation of it. So you're substituting essentially your memory for the actual experience. And that, it, you'll see the same thing in books. Like as you're reading a book that you've read a bunch of times before, you will start to almost anticipate the words that are coming later in the sentence because you already know them. And you cease to read them as the experience of reading and it becomes the experience of recitation. And I think that's another way of looking at it, that what you're doing is you are reciting the thing, but to nobody. And reciting a thing to nobody is a somewhat frustrated purpose. Um, you're not receiving it, but neither is anybody else receiving it. So when you recite something, like, like when you, you pick a line that you really like, like, um, you know, uh, uh, oh heck, you know, I pick uh, uh, Macbeth's soliloquy. Um, you know, she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The fun of doing that really is in the idea that I am giving something to somebody. I am sharing this thing for somebody else who is there. Now, in the recitation of something like that, you can even entertain yourself by creating this moment and appreciating it at the same time, though that is not uh, by any means easy. But in terms of uh, seeing the thing, the frustrated recitation, the recitation to nobody, is I think a big part of where one goes wrong in the anticipation of it. You are neither giving it to anybody nor receiving it yourself. And that's what prevents you, I think, that's, that's one of the main things that prevents you from enjoying it. So um, to enjoy like a book or a movie that you've already seen a bunch of times, what you really need to do, and, and I've done this myself and I found that this works, is, I, you know, I'm not perfect at it, obviously, but um, is to force yourself to stop anticipating it. And if you can force yourself to stop anticipating the thing that you've already experienced, its experience is far more fresh and far more of an actual experience because you're not 
blocking yourself off from receiving it, you're actually allowing yourself to receive it if you can keep yourself from anticipating it. And so, uh, now, sometimes it works like when you're, um, for example, you don't need that when you're sharing something with somebody. So uh, I've seen this um, when I've been watching movies with my oldest son, who's old enough to appreciate, he's now old enough to appreciate a lot of things. And I'll point out like, oh, a really good part's coming. Make sure to pay close attention right here. And that anticipation does not ruin it for me because I'm giving, I'm sharing it with somebody. I'm, I'm sort of taking part in the giving of it to them. And so, you know, there, there's that, um, which is, you know, sort of, it's not the same thing, but it is, you know, an enjoyable thing where I'm still, you know, sort of taking part. But when you're doing it on your own, when you are alone with this, like, um, you know, I, I've read uh, G.K. Chesterton's Orthodoxy 20 some odd times. I've read Pride and Prejudice 20 some odd times. Um, and, uh, you know, various things. Uh, I've watched the Charlie Brown Christmas special a few dozen times. I've watched, interestingly, America's Sweethearts. Weird movie. I, I've, I think I made reference to it in my video on how to enjoy movies from bad people or by bad people. Um, it's, it's really weird in that it's not a great movie, and yet there's something about it that I really enjoy. There, there's something, there, there's a sort of odd purity to it, to certain aspects of it, very much in the face of most of it, um, that is really enjoyable. And I've watched it like 20 some odd times, and it's a movie I really can, uh, can do this with. And there are a bunch, you know, there, there are others too. I actually, uh, I don't like, I don't like reading books that I wouldn't want to reread, and I don't like watching movies that I wouldn't want to rewatch, um, because, like, they don't really pass the threshold of, of being worth the time for the most part. Um, so if I like something, I tend to rewatch it and, and, you know, get more out of it. I only tend to like things that have that much meat to them. Um, I, that's a fiction. Obviously, nonfiction is rather different. There are a lot of books one reads only once because you're there to just sort of absorb information and, and, um, perspectives on it and you do that once and you've gotten out of it what there is to get fiction is in a sense a lot more complex than non-fiction because fiction has all sorts of um complex layers interwoven that reflect all, all sorts of subtleties of the structure of uh, of human life whereas non-fiction is much more sort of on the nose non-fiction is well i mean technically um Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton is nonfiction, and that's very, very full. But nonfiction books that are extremely full in that way are much less common, and it is quite legitimate for them to not be um, like that. Like a um, you know book on the nature of uh, how to program well, such as um, the Mythical Man Month, for example. Like it's perfectly fine that that's a book to only read once, and you don't need to reread it. Um, it's still valuable that that first time, and and you know the important parts will stick with you. Anyway, um, so when I, I look at these things and when I go back to them and I watch them over again, the important thing is, or the thing that allows me to enjoy them every time is truly paying attention to them. Um, one of the things, like, when it comes to, to, I mean, either of them, it's kind of easy to let your thoughts wander as you're watching because you can pick up from any moment, you know exactly, you, you won't miss anything. First time you're watching something, you you have a, a, a necessity, an urgency to pay attention because you might well miss something and then not understand what happens a little bit later. The 15th time, like literally 15th time you have, you're watching a movie, you don't, you can pick up from any place and you will not be in, lost in the slightest. So you don't have any of that urgency to help you pay attention the whole time. What you have to do is just actually pay attention the whole time. So one part of it is not letting your thoughts wander, but actually paying attention, not relying on that urgency of wondering what's about to ha or you know what's going to happen, or uh, of wondering, trying to absorb things that you may need later, but rather actually devoting your attention to it. S uh, similarly with books. So part of it is not anticipating, and that's sort of a way of of letting your thoughts wander. Um, and part of it is, you know, don't let your thoughts wander because, you know, if you're relying on that kind of urgency, it's not going to be there in the slightest when you've experienced things for a bunch of times. Um, now, taking it out of there and into other things in life, because not everything is entertainment. But, you know, something like looking at the beauty of a tree. 
we come back to trees a lot, but I'm rather fond of trees. Um, one reason why, you know, one of my favorite poems is Joyce Kilmer's poem on trees. Um, I recorded it. It's, you can find it in my channel years ago. Um, but that's the one that begins, I, th I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. Um, really, really great poem. Anyway, um, very true too, as well. Trees are really, really beautiful things if you actually look at them and pay careful attention in their intricate structure that, that works so very well. Um, it, it really is. Uh, I have actually off screen, I've got my uh, ficus is indoors for the, uh, the season. So I was kind of, my eye was being drawn over to it. Um, so like a thing like that, whether you're looking at flowers or grass or trees or wood, um, uh, you know, again, like, like you know, art, uh, like, like the shirt from Jonathan Peugeot's uh, merch store, uh, symbolic, the Symbolic World merch store by Jonathan Peugeot. Um, you know, uh, art is made to be, be beheld by the human eye. Um, there are a lot of things in the world that are not made to be beheld by the human eye, but nonetheless, the human eye can behold them, like trees and grass and, um, you know, mountains and, ta and uh, tables and so on, wood of, of all kinds. And these things you can appreciate um in a manner i think that's a little bit analogous to how it works to be able to see those like 3d things so um if you've ever seen like, like the things that like like a jumble of static but if you defocus your eyes you can see a three-dimensional picture um, focus infinity, defocus your eyes, you know, sometimes crossing your eyes and then uncrossing them is what lets you do it, but that's a, essentially a version of defocusing. Um, so if it, it's essentially focusing not on the thing, but focusing beyond it. And then if you can focus beyond the plane of the thing that you're looking at, it, you know, it becomes 3D. Those things, there's a certain sort of patience that's involved in which you just sort of stop trying to do things and take it in in a way. And you just sort of like look, you try to look beyond, even though there is no beyond, uh, the thing in front of you. And it requires a certain sort of patience to look beyond a solid wall that you can't see through. Um, but you know, those things then work if you do that. And in kind of an analogous way, when you're trying to like, when you're looking at a flower, when you're looking at the grass, when you're looking at a tree, there's all sorts of intricate structure that you can study. And it won't bring you any happiness if what you're trying to do is fit that to a pattern that you have conceived ahead of time. So if you're trying to imagine a structure and seeing if it matches, you're not going to derive much of any enjoyment. What you have to do instead, and, and this is a thing that takes a lot of practice, is to look at it and keep looking at it and simply take in the detail and look around at the detail and keep on taking it in. And the thing is, if you pay sufficient attention, though, there will always be far more detail than you can take in and far more detail than you can remember. Although over time you do get better at it as well. And so that doing that, um, and you can use almost anything, you know, anything other than like, you know, you'll have a hard time doing this with a mirror or anything that, that's like truly uniform. Um, but like you could literally do it with paint drying as long as it was like an eggshell paint or anything that has like a texture to it where you can look and see and, and like take in the structure of it. And that's a good sort of way of practicing. Kind of reminds me of, um, there's a story I had heard of, uh, um, uh, it's a Chinese story of a boy who wanted to become a gem cutter. And, and so he went to the, uh, to the gem cutter and, um, you know, I, I think like in the typical, you know, fashion of the, of the way these stories go, you know, stayed all day on the, the gem cutter's doorstep until the gems, you know, and, and um, then came back and then, and then the, the gem cutter finally no, you know, noticed him in the sense of took notice of him and, uh, allowed him in. And, you know, I said he wanted to be an apprentice and the, and the gem cutter, um, said, all right, I'll teach you, uh, sit here. And he handed him a stone, said, hold that. And then didn't talk to him for the rest of the day. At the end of the day, he asked for the stone back and sent the boy on his way. And, you know, the same kind of thing is when you sit outside on the doorstep all day, 
it is, you know, to demonstrate that you're, you know, not being impatient and so on. So, but this happened, day, you know, for day after day. And, um, you know, and then finally, just it, it was sort of going on too long. The gem cutter should have, you know, like accepted that he really like meant it, that he was dedicated enough and started teaching him by now. And so when the gem cutter told him to sit down, was handing him the stone, um, you know, he just, I, I, I thought you said you would teach me how to cut gems. I'm doing nothing but sitting all day long. I, I think I've proved I'm patient. Aren't you going to teach me? And the gem cutter said, you know, roughly, you know, do you want to learn? Yes. Then sit down and hold the stone. And he handed it and he handed the stone to the kid. And the kid just sat there and looked at the thing and looked at it, puzzled. This is a different stone. And then the gem cutter said, now you're ready to learn. And so the, the I, I didn't quite tell it right. I apologize. Um, Cause it was like the same stone every day. I forgot to mention that part. Um, but it was a subtly different when he finally was looking at it enough to notice that it wasn't the same stone. He finally developed his ability to look at gemstones well enough to see small differences is the point of the story. And, or at least one of the points of the story. Anyway, the, um, and that, but that's the, the point that's relevant to here, which is that kind of thing. It's, it's a thing you have to train yourself to. It's not so much a matter of, of having techniques or, or there being a trick to it or like an approach that really works so much as having this as a goal and being willing to put in the time and effort to get good at it. And it's not always easy. Um, it's the sort of thing that's definitely a lot easier if you do it in smaller, you know, smaller bits, smaller sections. Um, you know, for a lot of people, you don't need to do it all that often. Um, because I mean, there's so many, so much new stuff does in fact come at you. Um, in this world, depending on, you know, what people are around you and what needs they have from you and so on. But you have a bunch of people and they tend to have a lot of needs. Um, and so there, there's, uh, you know, depending on which stage in your life you're in as well. Um, I, I'm in one of those, you know, I'm in, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. I'm in a very busy stage in life where there's a lot that people need from me. Um, so, you know, it's not uniform throughout all life. And, uh, you know, when you're younger, when you're older, um, but, uh, it's a thing that's very much worth practicing. It's a, a thing that's very much, uh, worth doing. You get the same, um, something that will also help too, is, uh, the ability to pray. And, uh, it, it's kind of related, like the ability to pray, to focus your thoughts, to quiet yourself down so that you can, act, you know, actively do something. Um, so praying can also help, um, the Jesus prayer, by the way, incidentally, is really great. The one, Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Um, just repeated, um, over and over. I'm particularly fond of that one. Um, they, they're a bunch, but, uh, you know, I mean, any prayer will work and it doesn't have to be repeated prayer. Um, you won't, if it's not repeated prayer, you're not going to be doing something else very well during it. Like if you're, if you're, uh, you know, if you're, if you're doing extemporaneous prayer, you're going to be focusing your attention on that. The thing about uh, repeated prayer is that repeated prayer can be done while you're doing something else too. And it can have a very calming, very focusing, um, effect on you. So that can help too. Like that's one thing, like when I hunt, um, you know, sitting in a tree, you know, I, I could easily go, you know, an hour without seeing anything but like a squirrel. And so it's, um, you know, it can easily go a lot longer than that too. I mean, you know, there are days when you don't see anything. Um, a lot of days you'll see something, but too far off to take a shot on or whatever. And, you know, so it, it livens things up, but not in a useful way though. You're always collecting knowledge and information about what's going on. But, um, but nonetheless, like sitting there for a long time, like you can think about subjects and, and contemplate subjects. There's a while, um, when I was, uh, last year, um, sort of culminated in a video I did while I was hunting. I was pretty sure no deer were going to show up. Um, the, uh, 
where it was about, uh, where it's doing a lot of thinking about like the soul and misapprehend, you know, how people misunderstand the soul and what they think it is, and and the nature of uh, hylomorphism, um, the, the soul being the form of the body, and uh, how you know people take this as too much of a ghost in a machine kind of thing, and various stuff um, about that. So like you can use time like that to think on subjects. Um, at the same time, you can also use that time to absorb what's in front of you, to pay attention to the specifics, to really look at things, and then to... One thing is quiet yourself down, and then to focus. Um, you know, really interestingly, in Bishop Barron's video on prayer, it is this really fabulous video, I've watched it, I don't know, five, six times, um, on prayer, and the uh it, like what he said the most important thing uh, and he quoted um uh it's the guy where the seven story mountain he was uh, uh i can't remember his name now shoot but anyway he was asked you know what's the one thing i can do to improve my prayer life and his answer was take the time so the first thing you can do is take the time um and that's exactly true of, it's true of prayer and it's true of like learning to enjoy things that you've already enjoyed one of the first things we have to do is to take the time if you're trying to not be there you will never succeed so you have to put time into it and another one of them um was the need for quiet and this is both uh it's actually less important physically because it's really you can get to the point where you can tune things out pretty well one thing is a father of three children it is amazing the sort of background noise i can tune out these days um i i've had conversations with people telling like i'm sorry there's just so much background noise i can't pay attention to what you're saying I'm like oh right they're like two children who are fighting with each other behind you know who are, who are like playing with each other and stuff behind me and, and there's something else going on i kind of wasn't paying any attention to that so it's amazing what you can learn to tune out from the the world with with enough practice um that said if it can be quiet that can be useful being able to tune it out more useful frankly um because then it doesn't really matter what's there and you're not as much at the mercy of your environment but you know physical quiet but um but there's that, that great thing about uh when um when moses um was told that he, he would uh, be allowed to see the lord and the lord would pass by and let him see um or, i'm sorry no no no, no not not that it was uh, elijah hearing the the voice of god but there there was a storm and an earthquake but the you know the, the, the but the, there, there's a great storm but the the lord was not in the storm and there there's an earthquake but the lord was not in the earthquake and so on and then finally there was a tiny whispering voice and the lord was in the tiny whispering voice and the the point being if you're not quiet you can't hear a tiny whispering voice and this is true i mean it's true when you're praying but it's true of like trying to enjoy something in front of you that you especially something that you've already seen before that if you're not quiet you won't be able to take it in and quiet primarily in a meta in a, in a metaphorical sense but like if your thoughts are wandering if you're trying to be somewhere other than you are in your mind um then you're not going to be able to pay attention to what's in front of you and that's true of movies that's true of books that's true of you know beautiful things like sunsets and mountains and trees and anything you've seen before it's true of jokes you've been told for 15 times by someone it's true of a lot of things that if you are not quiet you won't be able to receive them and so that ability to make yourself quiet is probably one of the biggest keys to be able to enjoy things that you have already enjoyed before to take the same old thing and still get all you know get the good in it that is in it even though you've already gotten that good and there's no surprise available so stuff you know ways of approaching this and it's not a coincidence that like the things that lead to happiness in like the full sense uh, of happiness not not like bubbly feelings but like you know true fulfillment and true contentment and and you know happiness the you know, happiness of my, uh, sense of makarios uh, blessed that these things have echoes of each other, that they're all similar to each other. They kind of are going to need to be. <laughs> Until next time, may you hit everything you aim at. If you like this video, then clicking the like button, according to YouTube, will make them more likely to recommend it to others. If you know anyone who might get something out of this video, then it would be kind to share it with them, or just share it on social media in general. And if you'd like to see future videos of mine, you can subscribe, 
And uh, if you're not in the habit of checking your subscriptions page regularly, then I suggest clicking the notification bell and setting that to always, because otherwise uh, subscribing to a channel basically just sort of like gives YouTube a hint that maybe it should consider recommending these videos to you, possibly at some point, if they think so. It's a funny world we live in. God bless.